the conditions in Nazi Germany were so extreme. Um, for example, people were taken to concentration camps, beaten up, sent back. Extermination camps had not yet begun. Um, people had lost their jobs in all the sh shops. It said no Jews allowed. I mean, the atmosphere was totally impossible. And so what had become what seemed impossible to be separated from your children became a necessity at some point. How old were you when this happened? I was uh, 11 and a half, 12. So you, you must remember that day when, you, when your parents took you to the railway station and said goodbye? Very much so, very much so. My father had already had to leave, had to flee uh, into Poland across the border, otherwise he would have been arrested. I was there with my mother and an uncle who um, took me to the, to the railway station. We traveled all night to Berlin. In Berlin, uh, we were received with some vegetable, I'm sorry, with some fruit by a relative of ours who distributed to all the children. A few hours later, we went on to our journey towards the Dutch border with a Gestapo man who came from Danzig. The Gestapo men got off at the border of Holland and we traveled then uh, to the evening of the following day until we reached the Hook of Holland. We got some, f again, fruit and sandwiches. We hadn't slept at all uh, from Dutch volunteers and uh, boarded the ferry in the late, n middle night, I would say. And about six hours later, in the very early morning, we arrived in Harwich, about 18 children. So, and what, what happened then? Were you uh, t taken to, to, uh, to families who, who yeah. took you in? We, we took the train to, uh, to the Liverpool Street Station. And then whoever was there w waiting for the children, there were some who had been sort of temporarily adopted, some who had no such luck, or, or, and went to, to a kind of a home. I was very, very lucky indeed, because my mother's two sisters already lived in London, so did my grandmother. So they picked me up, and um, that, that is how I got there personally. And the others, I, with, the, with the exception of two distant cousins who were on that same group, uh, I, never, I never saw again, in the sense that we, we didn't have much in common with each other. It was just the fact that we were sitting on the same train, uh, and that was it. Did, did you have any idea when you left Dunzig that you would never see your family again? No. No, no, no. The, the, the entire idea that uh, the Holocaust, uh, the whole concept, I think even the Wannensee conference where the, where, where the final solution was decided, I don't think that it happened until later. And, uh, and also in the imagination or in the thought process of a 12-year-old child, you don't think strategically ahead what will they do next or what could they possibly do. You, you take it step by step. The war broke out within a few days of my arrival in, uh, in London, I think three days later. Um, I received, my parents were deported to eastern Poland and, and eventually Auschwitz and death. Um, and I received one Red Cross postcard from them and that was all. What was it like uh, to, to be in Hook of Holland waiting, f waiting for that boat, wa waiting for that ferry to, to take you to England? I mean, was there a sense of, of uh, uh, curiosity? Yes. Or? Children don't have a sense of drama. Or of, it's only in retrospect that I, we realized that if we had not crossed that water, we would, be, we would have been caught by the Germans a little bit later, in any case, because they came here, they deported all the Jews, as you know that story we would have been among them. So the very fact that we were, that we were across the water and our lives were saved occurred to us very strongly and deeply later. But at the time we were just tired kids wanting to have a sleep which we hadn't had for three days. Growing up in England, well it was the Blitz, it was the bombing, the daily bombing practically of, of, of England, well London, which, where I lived my boarding school was. It was they were pretty horrifying years. Uh, but again, as a child, you see things differently. 
you got used to the bombs falling every night and you didn't bother to get out of bed because they were falling anyway. Stuff like that. Somehow we got through the war. And um, like all the other children, that they were there. And I mean, other children, English children, we, we managed. At some point, of course, you, you must realize that you were amongst the 10,000 who, who got out and one and a half million did not. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, does that make you feel lucky or guilty? Guilty. Guilty because you, you, you somehow wonder, well, first of all, guilty because you wonder why, well, I, I don't wonder, I'm not a religious person. We were statistically lucky. There was no reason. Uh, we are just as mediocre uh, as the most mediocre people who, who were killed, and there must have been a large amount of very brilliant and potentially talented people among, among those kids who we'll never know. Uh, I, I'm saddened by what was lost, because if you take one and a half billion children then, you would have, uh, uh, you would have six, seven, eight million people today, and among them must have been people who might have found the cure for cancer. Who knows?